Aloha. Welcome everyone who is here, all 10 of us or so. Wow. It was full at the ADM service. Usually it's full here and thin there. And I welcome to those of you online too. This is, oh well, okay. But we're here. Wherever there's two or three, there Jesus is also. Um, I don't think there are any special notes on the service. So um, again, it is the sixth Sunday of Advent. One more to go next Sunday. And then that evening, Christmas Eve. So I invite you to stand now as you are able for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. Amen. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance, trusting this promise of grace. Let us confess our sin. We pause for a moment of silent reflection. And together, everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in patterns and routines of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways. For the sake of our waiting world, amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen. A word about our gathering song. Uh, this is a Korean song that has often been sung when North and South Korea were talking about reuniting. I don't know if it's been sung much lately, but uh, that's what the first, uh, uh, the accompanying line in italics is on mine. And uh, we'll start actually with verse one. And since we've not sung this before, I'm asking Emily to play it through once for us. So you can uh, hang of it.
Okay, good. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Pule Kako, let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. Good morning, everyone. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Be to God. <clears throat> Please join me with your response in Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. 
The Lord has done great things for us. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Those who sowed with tears. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed. Our second reading is from First Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. The gospel acclamation today is uh, covering the great O antiphon, O oriens in Latin, which means morning star or day spring. So I invite you to stand now for the gospel acclamation, and we will sing verse 6 of O come, O come, Emmanuel, O come, O day spring, come and cheer. Please stand as you are able. the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Jesus answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. You want a cakey story? Okay. That was a pretty firm yes. Okay. Let me get my chair, too. I'll just sit right here. And the last two Sundays, 
we have talked about John the baptizer, haven't we? All right, and here's a little kind of a story summary for John, and I call him the baptizer, and so do a lot of translations of the Bible. They call him the baptizer because he's not really a Baptist. He's a baptizer, right? I think he was a Lutheran. John the Lutheran? No, John the baptizer. Okay, he was a very unusual man. Did you hear how he dressed and all that? He had lots of hair and had a long beard, and his clothes looked like his face. They, too, were furry and hairy. His clothes were made of camel's hair. Have you ever seen the camel? Yeah, one or two bumps, right? And held together with a leather belt. John ate strange foods, too. Wild honey. I guess he got it right out of the beehive. That would be hard, wouldn't it? And he ate locusts. You know what a locust is? It's kind of like a grasshopper. Have you ever eaten a grasshopper? You ate a grasshopper? Chocolate covered? Nope, just straight. Oh, it's candy flavored? Okay, all right, good enough. Was it okay? Okay, it was yummy. I'll take your word for it. All right. Well, God gave this crazy looking guy an important job. His job was to tell people that Jesus was coming and help them get ready to believe what Jesus would teach them. John was Jesus' cousin, did you know that? And he knew things Jesus would tell the people were gonna be the most important things to tell them in the world. When he taught people, John stood by the river and yelled, hey, hey, all of you, he stood by the Jordan River. Tell God you're sorry for your sins. Turn your life around and act in ways that are good and honest. Then he would turn to another group and shout, are you listening? This is important. Jesus is coming. Jesus is the Messiah. That means king. He will save all of us. Day after day, John continued teaching and preaching and crying out so that people would listen. Many people came to hear what John had to say about Jesus. And they were rich people, and they were poor people, and they were honest people, and not so honest people, and they were nice people, and not so nice people, and... Some people, some of them listened to John. Some didn't. Some people said, that man is a messenger from God. Some said, he's really kind of odd. I'm getting out of here. Many people believed the message John had told. And those people said, I'm sorry for my sins. I want, to forgive. I want God to forgive me. And to each, John said, God does forgive you. He baptized those people right in the river. And the people started calling him John the Baptizer. John the Baptizer had done a good job. The people were ready to hear the message that Jesus would bring. And John and the people all lived joy. That's right, joyfully ever after. Okay, thanks for coming up. I don't know about all of you, but sometimes I feel kind of like John the Baptizer, a little hairy or harried, maybe I should say, especially this time of year, right? And that makes me feel a little anxious sometimes too, like, what have I not done? Like, the plates are blowing away. So, okay, there she's going to get them. My routines feel kind of thin. This. The things I do in ordinary time, you know, the, the weekly, the daily routines, they, they get a little thin or feel like they're thrown off with gift buying, card writing, dinners, decorating, all the, all the stuff that goes with holidays, right? And then trying to make it all, put it all together, disrupted by looming holidays. And what I say a lot, uh, especially when 
the last Sunday of Advent is Christmas Eve, and it's all mushing together. We, we're, we're short a week, right? We almost got shorted a week. I, say, I keep saying, what have I missed? What have I missed? The other day it was banners. Banners, right? Get the banners out. Luckily, we had the right times in, for the banners because they changed a lot during the pandemic. This is the first time since the before times we're going back to 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, Christmas Eve services. So we'll see how that goes. So what have I missed? And I hurry up and wait, right? Okay, it's all set. Now we just wait for it. Wait for it. And that's hard. That's hard to do when you're hurry up, hurrying up and waiting for something. It's not easier when we live in a culture that likes immediate gratification, right? I want it and I want it now. Instead of sending a snail mail, we send an email, right? And it, boom, shows up like that if it works right. I want it fast. Like wanting, okay, and this is, this is important. It's like wanting homemade gingerbread cookies. That's what I want. And when I was, little, when I was young, my mom would take those ingredients and pour them into the bowl, the mixing bowl, and then she'd stir them all up, and then she'd lay that, that gingerbread, the raw gingerbread out with the cookie cutter, right? And then she put them in the oven. I've been thinking about this all week, and it's like, oh. She put them in the oven, and you could smell them baking, right? And it smelled so good, I could almost taste it. Do you ever have it smell that good, Ben? Do you? Sam? OK. Yeah, that's, that's what it was like. So already here, but not yet. They're here, but the frosting is not yet on the gingerbread man. They're still a little warm. So. What do we do? We taste it with our senses other than, right? Maybe that'll keep things from blowing away. That was quite a gust. OK. You know, that's one way to listen to a sermon. I just realized that. OK, good job. I learned a new word this week, too, to describe a lot of this. It's the gingerbread cookie is already here in the baking, but it's not yet in my mouth. I learned a new word. Uh, I think I've heard it before, but I never really thought about it much till this week. It's called liminal. Anyone ever hear the word liminal? Oh, you're the first one. Okay, yeah. It comes from the Latin word lemon, which means threshold of a door or a windowsill, a transition spot from outside to inside, inside to outside. Liminal. And it, the, the formal definition is of or relating to a transitional, intermediate state, stage, or period. So it's transitional or intermediate, or as I like to say, in between. It is in between. And I think that's what these readings were all about. In between. Isaiah 61, which if you ever get discouraged, if you ever get discouraged, I don't care what time or season of year it is, just read Isaiah 61. Garments of salvation. I mean, God's coming and is going, but he's talking to people who have are someplace in between exile in Babylon and return to the uh, sacred city of Jerusalem and rebuilding the temple. And they're kind of twixt and tween, kind of on the, on the uh, doorstep, and they're not sure. And Isaiah is saying, don't be discouraged. Don't lose faith. To be discouraged is another way to say, I am losing faith in whatever I am discouraged about. Don't lose faith, says Isaiah. God is here. 
even though it's not quite all together yet. Liminal. Paul is writing the same thing to the Thessalonians, who are discouraged because, and we've been reading about this for the last few weeks, Jesus hasn't come back yet and rescued them and punished all the bad guys and done all good, right? He hasn't come back, and they are losing faith or hope. They're discouraged. And Paul is saying, wait, 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 wait. The spirit of Jesus is here. It is here. Jesus is here. And so you can rejoice always. You can pray without ceasing. And in all things, including the discouraging things, you can have faith. Liminal kind of an intermediate transition, right? I'm looking out the window. I'm leaning my arms on elbows on the windowsill and saying, where's Jesus? Well, oh, he's here. He's here, right? Good. You can stay. Good. Do you want to preach the rest of the sermon? No. Okay. Well, you're doing pretty good there. I just, just wanted to check. And then John the baptizer... Let's talk about intermediate. He's not quite Old Testament. He's not the great prophet Elijah, you know, one of the two great prophets right alongside Moses. They're the two that appeared with Jesus at the transfiguration, right, talking to him. And he's not quite New Testament, this John the baptizer. He says, I'm not the Messiah, so we're, he says, we're waiting for him. And he says, he's here. He, he actually says, he talks... He's here, and he's on his way. And this guy's going to be something. So wait. Wait for him. Uber liminal, right? Uber liminal. Maybe we're in a liminal period, too. Maybe that's what I've been trying to get at by saying we're already, but not yet, right? The reign of God is already here, but it is not yet fully realized. Yeah, I think so. And maybe we can feel liminal about a lot of other things, too, like wars and rumors of wars, or famine and hunger, or pandemic and pestilence. Faith? How's the faith? The economy? Is it good or is it bad? Or is it both? Should we even talk politics? Oof. Wait for it. We have an election coming. And we're like, what? Liminal. We're in between something, and we know not what. And maybe it's not just the mega issues, too, that leave us feeling in between, neither old nor new, um, like me saying, what have I missed as we get ready for Christmas? Maybe it's something like that. Will I make it to Christmas? When will the cookies be ready? When can, oh, when can I open the presents under the tree? The presents are already here, but they are not yet opened. Uh, there's mine with my name on it, but I can't, I can't open it. Mom and Dad say don't open it. Oh, liminal. Will I make it to graduation? Will I have my job next year? What will my family do? Where will it be in 2024? Can we afford Hawaii? What school should I go to when I graduate? Is marriage in the offing? Retirement? Liminal. In between. Where are we at? How's it going to turn out? Waiting and wondering can be anxiety producing. Welcome to the liminal. And in these liminal times, this in-between age of the already and the not yet, I'm thinking my job is pretty easy. Good news, at least for me, I think my job is doing pretty good. All I need to say to you is, do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid. Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith is courage. Fear is the opposite of courage, right? Be not afraid. Have courage. 
Jesus is already here, even if the not yet of life is excruciating. So the reign of God is here in the redemptive suffering of a Messiah on a cross, of a vulnerable baby in a manger, in a cave, maybe even in a Gazan bomb shelter. Jesus is here. So, have faith, be of good, good cheer, do not be discouraged. God is here. And so along with St. Paul, I can say, let us rejoice, let us pray, and let us give thanks. And I don't remember seeing any gingerbread cookies in the potluck. No, I want one. Oh, well, I'll just have to wait for it. Amen. And the hymn of the day, the tune may be familiar to you. Uh, I think the words are new. And Emily, would you play this one through for us once as well? I kind of like that. Yeah, that's catchy. We'll, we'll have to sing that some more. I invite you now to stand as you are able and let us confess our Advent faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. We offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Fill our mouths with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy as we bear witness to the great things you have done. Give your church a spirit of gladness as we gather and as we are sent. E ka haku. Let the trees of the field sing your praise, protect forests, orchards, rainforests, and all wooded areas from disease and deforestation. Keep us grateful for their gifts of oxy oxygen, food, shade, and shelter. We pray especially for ohia trees. E ka haku. You love justice and promise your favor to those who are oppressed, brokenhearted, and incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and all who work within prisons, jails, and courts, that mercy may increase and violence wither away. E ka haku. Give us strength to pray for our world without ceasing and provoke us toward love and good deeds for all who are in need. Especially all those whom we name in our hearts and whose names we now speak aloud. <clears throat> for the families of Tom Herdlicka, Alice Wendell, and Carrie Kirke, for Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, all those suffering from long COVID, Alice, or Arturo, Benny, Christina, Dick, Dawn, Florentina, Glenn, Naomi, Joanne, Kathy, Mary, Michael, Hattie, Peggy, Rose, Star, and Yvonne. Provide for all without adequate housing, food, employment, or access to health care. Empower us as helpers and advocates. E ka haku. Open our hearts to those who serve as truth tellers in our church and in our society. Bless leaders in church and society in their task of proclamation. Amplify voices of peacemakers, advocates, and especially those whose voices are ignored or marginalized. E ka haku. Aloha ke akua. Remember those with birthdays this week, especially Christy, all those who celebrate baptismal anniversaries. May their days be full of laughter and life and love. E ka haku. Aloha ke akua. May we always remember the communion of saints in Waianae, known as Malahia Lutheran Church and their pastor, Jazzy Bostock. May they be the faithful witnesses to the God who is already present with us 
in the Christ child. E ka haku. With gratitude, we rejoice in the saints, <clears throat> excuse me, especially St. Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, who witnessed to your life in all circumstances, in whom your spirit was not quenched, even in death. Through them, teach us always to hold fast to what is good. E ka haku. Listen to these and all our prayers. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> o God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Aloha nui e oko. Okay, aloha o ka haku e mau anameako. Apaoloa. Friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be with you always. And let us share the peace. Peace, peace. Peace. What? What was that? Peace. And you may be seated. And peace to everybody Zooming with us, too. You may be seated. And just I should just mention a word about St. Ambrose. It was his feast day on Thursday. He was the Bishop of Milan. And um, he was a great preacher in his day. And he actually uh, baptized St. Augustine, who is probably the greatest theologian between Paul and Martin Luther, in uh, many people's minds. And um, Ambrose, I was told years ago, was the first person in uh, Europe, in the, in the empire, to actually read silently to himself. Now, we all read silently to ourselves quite often, right? But until that point, only people who were deeply disturbed read to themselves. Everybody else read out loud. I don't know what that makes of us, but we shall continue on. And Emily, would you please lead us in the uh, offering song as we prepare the table? Please stand as you're able for the prayer. Oof, what a morning. E pulikako, let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Okay. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. 
And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Namakana Akeakua, Nokapoe Akeakua, the gifts of God for the people of God. Ekomomai, Ekipomai. Come, all is ready, and you are welcome. shed for you. For those of you who are worshiping with us online at this time, if you have bread and wine at hand or something reasonably close, you may take it up and commune with us as we say the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. E Polikako. Let us pray. Merciful God, constant source of all healing, we give you thanks for all your gifts of strength and life. And above all, we thank you for the gift of your Son, through whom we have health and salvation. As we wait for that day when there will be no more pain, help us by your Holy Spirit to be assured of your power in our lives and to trust in your eternal love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Announcements. I'm going to cover this here. Couple things. Um, we have, I believe, uh, assisting ministers for all the services except for Christmas Day. And if you're interested in being a a lector and and an uh, assisting minister on Christmas Day, let me know. Also, um, the lawn guys, Russ and Paul, from the 8 a.m. service, uh, Paul is going to be gone all of February. 
Russ is going to be out of commission for about six months with an uh, operation on his foot. So we need a little help. One person thinks she can cut the grass. I know she can cut the grass. She thinks she can do it on Friday afternoons and evenings. But then Saturday in the morning, we need people to just help clean up. Sometimes the parking lot needs a good uh, sweeping. Sometimes palm branches have, uh, have fallen down in the front or around here. So we need, we need to sort of spruce up. So if you could help for uh, starting sometime in February in particular, I'd appreciate it. Also, um, we need to get the Christmas tree up. Christmas is coming. It's not here yet, but it's coming. And, um, and uh, I, came, I, th I think I know who put the tree up last year, but does anybody know how to put the tree up here? No. OK, you're off the hook. All right. And then I'm going to walk back, walk back here. Then uh, they're offering envelopes out uh, on the table there. If, if you uh, would like some and you haven't gotten some, call the church office and talk to Shelby. Uh, pledge drive is in the mail. And thank you to those of you who have returned your pledges. Uh, we're going to uh, gather them all up on uh, the Sunday after Christmas, December 31st, and, uh, and bless them. Also on December 31st, uh, I believe Bishop Nagler, or, excuse me, our synod uh, bishop, is going to be preaching uh, via uh, the, he's going to record a sermon, and, and you can get a second opinion on Christmas. How does that sound? All right. And he's a pretty good preacher, so I, I look forward to that. Uh, you can see we have some poinsettias in here already. So if you want to bring some next week uh, by, feel free to do that. School is out. Preschool is out by noon on Thursday. Okay? It's out by noon on Thursday. So if you want to bring some by in uh, uh, Thursday afternoon, Friday or Saturday, that'd be fine. Or just bring them Sunday. You can do that as well. And yes, oh, we've been asked uh, if, if you want to make an offering uh, for 2023, make sure it is to the office by December 31st. That's a Sunday. I try to make sure you get it there by, by the 30th, uh, if, you if you can. And then it can be counted with the offering uh, on Sunday the 31st. Um, Blue Christmas is this Thursday. I just want to mention that uh, if you're feeling blue in any way, shape, or form, uh, we're going to have a service of candle lighting and scripture reading and prayer here uh, in the uh, uh, sanctuary. And we aren't going to Zoom it or record it otherwise, uh, just for confidentiality's sake and uh, out of respect of people here uh, who may be feeling uh, somewhat sad, grieving, uh, depressed or otherwise blue. And then uh, next Sunday, 10 p.m. only. So we'll make all the 8 a.m.ers come to 10 p or 10 a.m. only. And we'll make all the 8 a.m.ers come to the 10 a.m. and then we'll have more people. Okay, I think. And then uh, uh, the uh, Christmas Eve service is that night. And as I said earlier, 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And we'll see how that goes. First time to have two services since... Um, uh, 2019, I believe. I think that's the first time. And then Emily's going on vacation. So you have a good vacation and a good rest. And you're going to go see family, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So um, we'll pray for safe travels for Emily and her family. And Tom Poole has graciously said that he, he'd uh, fill in for Emily uh, in this season. So uh, uh, he'll, he'll be around for the music. And he has also offered to play Christmas music before the 8 a.m. service, starting about 7.30, 20 till 8. So if you want to come early and listen to some Christmas music, you can do that. That's a lot of announcements. Did I miss anything? Okay, I do want to mention one thing then. Uh, we pr prayed for Alice Wendell at, at the uh, church service or you're during the prayers of intercession, that's Elaine Schwilk's mother. She, went in, she got sick with RSV and went into uh, uh, hospice care rather quickly and passed, I believe it was on Thursday. So, anything else? Please stand then for the benediction and the sending song.
The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus for whom we wait. Amen. And the sending song is the canticle of the turning. And let's sing verses 1 and 4.